The last episode of Taylor's Travels was posted exclusively on Patreon to celebrate my patrons. Thank you guys so much. You're what makes this channel possible. In that episode, I returned home after eight months at sea with Sailing Doodles. Returning home to Canada meant I had to abide by the mandatory 14-day quarantine, which for me meant self-isolating in my camper van. So in this episode, I'm going to be giving you a tour of Ruby. Hey, I'm Taylor. I've been leading an alternative lifestyle for the last two years. From living in a van to living on a sailboat. With my guitar by my side along the way. Subscribe to follow me along this wild adventure that I call life. Hi, I'm Taylor, and today I'm going to give you a tour of my 1989 Dodge camper van. Before we begin the tour, I'm going to share some of my personal history with the van, as well as some of Roadtrek's history. I purchased my camper van in December of 2017. For being an older vehicle, it was in great condition, although it did need some work. I mean, it had this weird dragon thing catching a pig on the back. Once I repainted the back door, I finally decided on her name, Ruby, which also just so happens to be my birthstone. Not long after everything was fixed up, I hit the road, and I've kept the wheels turning ever since. Road Trek began in Canada with the resident of Kitchener, Ontario named Jack Hainmayer. In 1974, he was searching for a camper van that still had the same amenities as a larger Class A or C motorhome. He couldn't seem to find what he was looking for, so he designed his own and brought it to a small manufacturing company in Cambridge named Home and Park. When the van was completed, he was so thrilled with it, he actually ended up buying the company, as well as earning 16 US and Canadian patents for his unique design. Road Truck was truly born in 1980 when Hainmayer redesigned the famous sweeping roof line. This redesign allowed for better aerodynamics and fuel efficiency than a lot of other camper vans. There are four different floor plans, including the popular, versatile, 190 independent, and the 210 independent. Overall, Road Trek really stands out in the van community for their extreme attention to detail and amazing use of space. Now that I've filled you in on some of the history, let the tour begin. Okay, so to start the tour, I'm gonna start on the outside and work at, from the front to the back. But to start, we have the heart of Ruby. It is a 5.2 liter V8, and it's an automatic transmission with overdrive. For those of you who were asking, she did start the first time after being after sitting for a while. It's, uh, it's been a really reliable engine. I haven't had any problems with it. It's been like, it's like bulletproof. So that's a, a common trend with the, with the 318s. They're really well known for being really reliable. And I know a few people have noticed these headlights. They are aftermarket headlights and they are LED. Um, I can't recommend them enough. Moving back a little bit, we've got these awesome opening barn doors. These have come in handy for loading stuff in and out, and it's great to be able to park beside a campfire and have your doors open and just be able to sit right here. And of course, out the very back, we've got the back door. And again, this is essential. When you're laying in bed, if you're at a campsite and you just get to open your back door and wake up to this, it's probably one of the highlights of having a van. Your porch, your front porch is right here. Or your back porch, whatever. <laughs> One thing I definitely got to point out, when I first got the van, it had like mismatching hubcaps and rims and the tires were pretty much bald. So I spent a good amount of money on getting some nice rims and some really good Yokohama uh, all-terrain tires. Now, not that I, this is like a four x four off-road thing or anything like that, but it's good to be able to have some good all-terrain tires so that when I do want to go off the beaten path a little bit and be able to get to a campsite, I know that I can. And then the last thing I got to point out on the outside is these stickers. There's one on this side and one on the other side. And it actually came on the van when I bought it. And it says, 
if this van's a rockin', don't bother knocking. So I didn't put those on, those came with the van, just saying. My van is equipped with power windows and locks, cruise control, and even air conditioning. Inside, up at the front, we have obviously got the captain's chair, which is my seat. The captain's chair and the navigator's chair both swivel around to be able to sit at the table, as well as turn down to be two individual single beds. Then up here, we've got some storage, and then this is just kind of my glove box. So, other than that, I don't think we've got too much more to say up here. Let's move back. A major part of independent living, whether you're living on a van or a sailboat or anything, is power. So how do I run everything that I need to run in here? Well, I have 12 volt power as well as 120 volt power, which is supplied by my three lead acid batteries as well as my 3000 watt inverter. I also have a 1000 watt Honda generator, which I use to charge the batteries. Midway here, we have obviously our little dining area, but mostly this area is a lot of storage. Uh, underneath the passenger seats is where we store obviously my batteries and everything, and there's empty storage under here. Along the side rails of the, along the sides here, there's a lot of storage. So that's something that they designed really well in this van that there's no shortage of. Now you may notice I can stand up in here. So I'm five foot five and I can stand up all the way back in here. As far as for something that I wanted in my personal needs, this was really important because I can cook in my kitchen here, I can go in my closet, I'm not crouched down or hunched over or uncomfortable. And so I think the height limit here is six feet. So if you're six feet and under, you can pretty much stand in here. Now welcome to the kitchen. I've got my microwave, a fridge here. The fridge runs off of either 12 volt power, 120 volt power, or it can run off propane. And I've got my little sink, a two burner propane stove. I can vent out all of the propane fumes, which is very good. Um, there's not a lot of counter space, but for, for a single person, it's plenty of room. And although it is small in, in counter space and all that, there is, there's quite a lot for all of your kitchen needs. So I've got all of my cutlery and everything, my cups up here, uh, spices and coffee and tea, as well as all my pots and pans and food storage. I also have, for the summertime, my roof vent up here, which can open and let good air flow through. And then again, there's no shortage of compartment space. This is all extra storage in here. Behind the wardrobe door, there's closet space and a toilet. The closet doors are also designed to be privacy walls. I have a 50 gallon black water tank, a 50 gallon gray water tank, and a 100 gallon fresh water tank. This built-in meter allows me to see how full my tanks are and how charged my batteries are. And we've got the bedroom. Now it is not only just that, this is a double bed when it's folded down, but when it's folded up, it is two bench seats and a dinette. And underneath each side of the bench seat is lots of room for storage. And I've even got more under here. So I keep all my car essentials in here any extra stuff as well as extra gas. I keep that in here for my generator as well. A few small details that I forgot to mention are my propane heater underneath the bed and the 360 degree curtain coverage. This provides a good amount of privacy when you're traveling. Well, I guess we've made it all the way through. She is small. She packs a lot of punch and she has a lot of character. So thank you for checking out Ruby with me and I hope you follow along on more of my adventures.
there is one thing that I need to add, and it's this. Sailing Doodles is now a part of Ruby forever. If you haven't, obviously subscribe to Sailing Doodles on YouTube, as well as check out the merch shop. That's pretty new. So there's Sailing Doodles t-shirts, pillows, flip-flops, phone cases. So make sure you definitely check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. Rest of all of my clothing. Ow. 